I wasn't going to make this video until I saw the rather colourful reaction to Planet Coaster 2's Deep Dive number 3. Now there was actually quite a lot of great stuff in this, a lot of management features which as a sandbox player I probably won't use, but I can really appreciate the depth of detail and attention that's gone into these features, they look fantastic. And the other two notable features that I thought were great as well was the addition of umbrellas so the guests can actually buy these, that's really cool for when it rains, it's a nice thing to make the park feel a lot more realistic and alive. And then the guests can actually have dietary requirements as well and this will impact on the ratings of what shops you place around your park and the happiness of your guests. That's a really cool attention to detail and like I said again, realistic feature. But the main thing that got a lot of people talking after this third deep dive wasn't any of these new management features or the umbrellas or the dietary requirements, it was the game's UI. Now I have pretty strong opinions on this because I believe UI is probably one of the most important aspects of the game as to whether you're going to enjoy it because it's the singular thing that you interact with to play the game. And I wanted to give my feelings and feedback on this, not only to all of you lot watching, but to hopefully Frontier if you're watching as well, because you've made an excellent game so far, I cannot stress this enough, but the UI I think is going to have a lot of people talking, so fixing this before launch or sometime after launch would be fantastic, so these are the things I wanted to say about it. Firstly, I think the main point that people are talking about is that the UI looks way too much like console. Now, I want to preface this and say that it's incredibly important to have differentiation between the UI of console games and PC games, because it's an entirely different setting. Most of the time when you're playing on PC, you're sat quite close to the monitor and you have a much more precise clicking device, the mouse, to be able to navigate these menus and actual items on the screen. So these can afford to be much smaller and more compact and show you more information at a time. Whereas when you're on console, you're navigating with a controller which isn't as precise as a mouse, so you do want these buttons and menus to be larger, and obviously you're sat further away from it, presumably on a TV, so again, you'd want these buttons and menus to be bigger. But the main problem I think people are having so far is that the build we've seen is presumably the PC version of the game, and everything looks very big. The first example that springs to my mind when I say this is the coaster selection menu. On Planet Coaster 1 on PC, when you click on the coaster selection menu, it comes up with the blueprints and then the custom ones, covering about a third of your screen, meaning that you've got all of this screen above that you can still see of the rest of your park, and you can actually interact with it as well. So while you're wondering what ride to place down, you can have a look around and a browse of the coasters at the same time. Then in Planet Coaster 2, when you do the same thing, it comes up with the same blueprints menu at the bottom of the screen, but to build a new coaster, this takes up pretty much the entire screen. Enough of screen space that it doesn't take up in the background, you can't actually navigate or interact with this. But at least you can actually see behind this menu. As large as it is, there is actually space around it that you can see where you're going to be placing the things behind it. But on these awesome new detailed management menus, it takes up your entire screen, but not really because there is so much blank space around the sides. I don't know whether this is to do with the UI scaling that they mentioned before, which yes is a great feature, but it does feel quite console friendly because when you're interacting with these things, you can't really see the live benefits of what's going on in the background. But I think my main issue with this problem is the inconsistency. There's some menus like this where they do operate like Planet Coaster 1 menus used to operate, where it's on quite a smaller part of the screen that's quite far away, and you can see what's going on in the background as you make these changes, rather than just having these gigantic empty spaces that don't really provide any purpose and could be much more condensed. Think about the menus that are in City Skylines too. The nice and out the way you can interact with stuff in the background and the option to pin these menus would be nice as well so that if we can stick it to the screen and do stuff in the background without the menu going away. And speaking of it being inconsistent, these park management maps and the whole way this UI is laid out is really good. The actual interactable part of the menu is quite small and out of the way, so you've got this whole big area that you can see exactly what you're doing and what changes you're making actually have an effect in the park. Unfortunately, problems with the menu scaling extend to the coasters as well. You'll probably be able to see it in most content creators' building videos that they might have to scroll up and down to access features on this side panel, which, if it was along the bottom like it is on Planet Coaster 1, I feel like all of these features will be so much more easy to access. And like with the testing mode that I mentioned in one of my previous videos, how you have to navigate all the way to the end of the coaster building menu to access this, whereas in Planet Coaster 1, all your coaster building stuff is on the bottom, and then your testing menu is on the right. Everything is on your screen. You don't need to click on to access any of the menus, it's just there. And personally for me, since I've played the game, some of the menus do feel a little bit overly complicated, like how in the coaster editor you have the edit mode and then the construction mode. In Planet Coaster 1, these were just one mode that they were combined and it made building a lot easier. Like for building the track you do this in the construction mode and then for smoothing it you do it in the edit mode. 
I just didn't really understand the decision to have this as two different modes when in the previous game it was just all there in the same mode. It just feels like everything is laid out in such a way that you have to navigate through these different pages instead of everything being all in the same place, which is what I mean about it being more laid out for console users. The buttons are larger, the menus are bigger, and there's more menus so that you can have basically less on your screen at a time. And don't get me wrong, I would completely understand if this was just the console version of the game because like I mentioned before, these things of having bigger and more frequent menus do benefit the way that you navigate and use the console version of the game. From playing both, I know that how Planet Coaster on console operates compared to how Planet Coaster 1 on PC operates, I understand the need for two different styles of menus, but at the moment, because this game's been built obviously for console and PC at the same time, it kind of feels like they're leaning more towards the console side when Really, I think there either needs to be a happy medium or two defined kind of menu styles that we can select between. But I don't want this video to be completely a rant because I'm already in love with Planet Coaster 2. There is so much that it's offering us and I'm sure so much that they've still got to show us as well. Like they said in the video, this isn't the full game. This is an early build of the game. So everything I've just mentioned could be fixed by the full game's launch. Who knows? But this isn't the only thing that people have been talking about since Deep Dive 3. In terms of the management side that will benefit both career players and sandbox players, the guests now have a whole new different range of emotions as well to tell you how they're feeling about your different aspects of the park, which is fantastic to see, and the coasters even have a lot more ratings now other than excitement, fear and nausea, which is great. Some of the new menus for setting defined areas of which staff can operate are really well integrated, like look at how easy it is to create that boundary. And it was really nice to finally get explained how the power aspect of your park works as well. I struggled so much with this as you could have probably seen in my actual gameplay session, but being able to be shown how to connect the different power generators and stuff like that around the park to make everything work was really appreciated. I'm glad they included that in Deep Dive 3. Also actually getting like a proper decent look at the night lighting, or not even night lighting, just going underground and having it be dark. That's fantastic. The fact that they've managed to evolve this engine so much since the previous game is really fantastic to see. We also got a nice look at some of the new coasters as well, including the Intamin Water Coaster, which for some reason they didn't place. And then we got to see our first dark ride as well, which is an Omnimover dark ride. These icon photos of this ride model more like this, please. These are so much better than the coaster ones. <laughs> Just please, please redo them before the game launches. And then we got a tour around the Vintage Rides pack as well, which you actually get with the deluxe version of the game. Now, I am intrigued to see whether it's just these rides that you actually get with the Vintage Pack and whether you get like some vintage style pieces and signs as well. I feel like that would be really nice, especially because it is quite a bit of a jump between the standard version of the game and the deluxe version price-wise. I'm happy with what we've got, but having more things like all the uh, new scenery pieces and stuff would be very nice. And we finally have a Helter Skelter in the game. Don't know why this wasn't in Planet Coaster 1, but I'm really glad that we've got that now. I will definitely be putting those in my parks. And we also got whatever this terrifying drowning machine is, which I can't wait to not use this because it's scary. <laughs> But yeah, that's all I wanted to say about Deep Dive 3. I was going to make a video on the night of Deep Dive 3, but I can't lie, I was a little bit disappointed with what we were shown, especially compared to how spoilt we were with the other Deep Dives. <laughs> I know they put a post on their Twitter mentioning drop tracks and switch tracks and more. We didn't see either of those in this. I don't know whether that was just an accident that they posted that, but for the next Deep Dive, uh, obviously that is the last one before launch of the game, so I would like to see a lot more new stuff, please or just more exciting stuff perhaps that creators haven't covered in their gameplay events. New stuff since that build would be uh, really appreciated to get us all really excited and convince people to buy this game because I am convinced that it's going to be a really good game. I'll definitely be buying it, I'll definitely be making content on it. It's another Planet Coaster game. Why would I not be excited? I can't wait for this game, but obviously like I mentioned I do have my doubts in a few areas. But I really hope these get ironed out before launch. I have confidence in this Planet Coaster team. With what they've showed us so far, there's a lot to be excited about, and I'm sure there's even more to be excited about coming in the future. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. See you in the next one.